damage. So putting him on a hyper carry might do wonders for their team. Yeah, precisely. But we are going to hop into champion select. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see exactly what happens as we get this one forward. And we'll see whether the picks and bans are actually going to change around here just a little bit. See whether the priorities are going to be placed in different areas. Because, of course, we saw the mid lane getting banned away just a little bit. The Hecarim going off the board there. And no focus on this jungle whatsoever. And I wonder whether that played into the hands of unlimited potential. Because, of course, Dandy's champion pool is massive. Yeah, and they did give him the Rek'Sai, which yeah. you thought might be a small mistake. Dandy loves that champion. And we saw how much pressure he was placing across the board. But by the end of the game, the Gragas was still a big force to be reckoned with. And yeah. he was still the big fat man that we know he is. And so much work. And they've opted towards the same similar bands, at least start of the last banning phase. Yeah, well, of course, the Cassiopeia is going to leave the table here, so Atong not going to be picking that one up, but Callista a little bit further down. Beachy Gaming want to take that one away immediately. An unlimited potential waiting a little while before really focusing in on what they're going to do. And if you were unlimited potential, what would you be taking away from Beachy here? Because, of course, you may as well try and focus on getting the same situation again. Yeah, you don't really need to adjust your bands by any means, because what happened last game was what you wanted to happen. You came yeah, out ahead. Yeah, ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, if you don't need to ban a jungler and you can target ban and still come ahead in a game, you don't really need to. And you can see the adjustment here from VT Gaming oh, is yeah. to get rid of the Gragas. Gragas was definitely a massive point there. And no matter how far VT put him behind, Amy was able to make it happen. So look, just remove it, force Amy to play something else. On the mid potential now with the Last ban option. Urgot is still available. Definitely a worthwhile ban there if they decide to take that one off the board. There is also the possibility of the Rek'Sai or a Sejuani, as we're seeing, being banned in response because the jungler has been taken away from yeah. them. Now you have to either ban the Rek'Sai or a Nunu, or you can opt to give them one and you pick the other. It's a big decision that needs to be made. Do you want to get rid of the Urgot, perhaps, that has been banned in the first game, or do you want to keep it so that the Urgot is available Make them first pick a jungler, for example, such as maybe that Rek'Sai that they do want. And then you can pick Nunu and Urgot in the one rotation. It's a very, very big decision with this next ban. Yeah, we'll see what they do. I actually would like to see them not ban away the jungler here. The Kassadin is going to leave the table. Azir is still available as well, which was a ban from the previous game. Of course, Xiao Yang, very comfortable on that one. But Vichy Gaming, oh, they wow. don't want to see the Kassadin this time. And it means that Xiao Yang, able to pick up the Azir, more than happy to first pick it away does give Dandy sort of his pick of the litter as far as these junglers are concerned, and Carrie could even play Rek'Sai in the top lane if he wants to take Nunu. Well, yeah, he definitely could, and they have the option of, I suppose, taking the Rek'Sai top Nunu jungle and leaving him with barely anything available across the board here for junglers. And yeah, sort of forced onto the Jarvan, perhaps. Yeah, but either way, I wouldn't be surprised if they do pick up a jungler. The mid laner has been picked from unlimited potential, so I don't think it'll be the Riven, but they may look towards the Nar perhaps with the Rek'Sai or the Nunu to take away from the top laners. Or Alistar, which we have seen a lot of bans. Yeah, banned actually away from Heart, so now they're going to pick that one away as well. Dandy thinking about heading over towards the Nunu, which is going to be locked away. Amy, few options here, but Rek'Sai is of course still available. He can head onto that champion if he wants to. Xiao Yang, we'll see whether they're going to lock away the top laner here or whether they're going to hit, pick up sort of a jungle and support combo, maybe save the AD carry and the top laner until the last couple of picks here. I know Amy does like a bit of Lee Sin, I have been informed, so... Well, that's true. He has the option of picking that up into the Nunu. It's interesting because the trading is quite even. Nunu doesn't take the damage, but they do opt towards the Rex side. They want to get that away. And the Urgot, very smart, strong AD carry pick. Yeah, sort of Urgot went a little bit unnoticed there. Did get banned away in the previous series, but Scatch does have the opportunity to pick that one up if they want to. Vici Gaming now. Do they just go to a Sivir? Well, it looks like he will be defaulting to a Sivir. That's a very good assumption to make. It does well into the Urgot at the very least. Able to spell shield or push the Urgot into lane, into the tower, make him waste all of his mana in the laning phase. And the Nar is being hovered now. I do think it'll be that taken away. That or the Maokai most likely is the the top option. So we'll see what they go with here. And if they go for another AD carry that isn't the Sivir, they'll most likely be going for a lane swap. Yeah, well, we'll see what does come through there. But Carry, of course, has played a heck of a lot of Nar in his career thus far. More than happy to lock that one away, force Long to play something that he may not necessarily be as comfortable on. He has already played Jarvan and the Nar. So we'll see whether the full AD with an Infinity Edge Jarvan is going to head into that top lane. Man, that was such a cool build. I loved it, it was so much. Phenomenal build. Loved it. But Hart 
thinking about what he wants to grab here, and with Scatch hovering over a Draven, I don't know where Urgot's going. Let's not count our eggs till they hatch at the moment. Let's see what they plan on doing. They have been hovering a lot of different champions, the Bard being hovered again. We're still not sure what they're actually going to lock in. They're like waiting until the last second. Yeah, damn, I was so excited for a potential top lane Urgot. <laughs> not going to happen this time around, though, as long as he's going to try his hand at the Rumble. Picking that one into the Nah this time around, going for a little bit of mid-game power. And with Urgot and Rumble and Rek'Sai, that is so much power in the mid-game. And then you've got sort of the late-game insurance of Azir. Yeah, and they have a lot of scaling damage as well. The Azir Rumble do a lot in the late game. Urgot, and even a Rek'Sai just does a lot of damage. You've got a big frontline, very well-rounded team comp that seems to do a lot at almost all stages of the game besides the level 1 to 6 phase. We're, we're still waiting for the last pick here for VT Gaming, but the four members they have, none of them really going to die anytime soon either. Yeah, well, it's true. We are possibly going to have some fairly drawn-out fights, and... There are some alarm bells going on in my mind here as Hatong locks away that Vladimir because the duo of Vladimir and Nunu is next to zero CC in yeah. that mid lane. That, yeah, exactly now I think about it. They don't have a whole lot of... Between all of their team, Nah has no CC unless he's Mega Nah. And then they've got the Alistar with the headbutt, headbutt pulverized combo. You've got Ice Balls, which is a slow amount, so it's not an exceptional amount of yeah. CC, but it's consistent. But overall... They don't really possess a lot of hard engage or consistent hard engage. It'll be all or nothing or kiting back will be what they look to do. Yeah, and a lot of it is going to be on Marta making sure that he's in the right positions, headbutt pulverizing his way into these fights and getting things happening. But when all of your eggs are in the basket of the cow, you could be running into some pro problems here just a little bit. But of course, with the Nunu, is able to secure a lot of jungle pressure. We've seen this before, but... As we go down the lineups, it's all pretty standard here. I mean, Vladimir Azir was seeing a lot of play towards the end of the LPL season previously. And of course, Sivir into Urgot is something that we were seeing a lot towards the end as well. Vladimir into Azir was the mid lane matchup that we've just hovered over. And that's a very interesting matchup because there's a lot of trading throughout. And Azir's a very volatile champion, doesn't have a high amount of health, but if he does look to trade with a Vlad, it tends to be an all-in style trade. So there might be a lot of jungle pressure in that mid lane. Yeah, well, if there is, I mean, we've mentioned this before, it might sort of go into Unlimited Potential's favor straight out of the gate because, of course, you've got the knockups. But, ladies and gentlemen, we want to be hopping into the Rift as soon as possible. But, man, Unlimited Potential again with a brilliant draft phase. Yeah, their, their draft looks so well-rounded. They've got damage throughout the entire game. They've got the tankiness. They've got the damage. And they just look to be so strong right now through their drafting phase. Their coaches are phenomenal. Yeah, they're really doing some work here. And, Vici, they may need to sort of think about exactly what's going to be going on here because, I mean, so far, I mean, they lose to OMG yesterday in, in game one. They managed to pick up a, a win in the game two, but see whether they can do it again as we hop onto the rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, onto the rift for game two between Unlimited Potential and Vici Gaming. Of course, all of Vici now sort of piling towards the opposite side of the map. <laughs> Nothing going to come from it besides the very standard deep vision being placed. Yeah. Looking to see if they can spot a 1v2 matchup. And the Sivir going straight towards the top lane, not going to be spotted until quite late in the wave if they choose for it. And... Can't really say where they're going to go from here just yet because they're all sitting near mid. Yeah, and it is going to be Marta and Endless not wanting to walk over wards. There are a whole lot of them littered throughout the jungle, though. Oh, I might spot them. Yeah, they may need to be careful. It's a cute little ward around the blue buff, and they have been pinged out. So, Vici, in clear vision. Unlimited potential, able to get the lane swap. I like this that they've opted for the lane swap in the Urgot. We don't often see it because Urgot so good at trading in the early, well, not early level 1 to 3, but from there on out, once oh, yeah. he has every spell, it's so hard to trade. And the Sivir, even with the spell shield available, you can just use an Acid Hunter and bait the shield before you throw out any damage. And Opting for the lane swap is so good for an Urgot because you've got the Nautilus who can roam and you've got the Urgot who wants levels as quickly as possible. Up against the Nah, you can just hang around until you hit a level level cap that's good enough to sustain in a 1v1, and then you're fine. Yeah, no worries at all. Heart 
is up here with the Urgot, though, and I love the Nautilus Urgot combo. So much CC in that combination of champions, and honestly, unlimited potential. When you compare them to Vici Gaming, it's like a buffet of CC in comparison. Yeah, it definitely is. They've got the Nautilus. Even Azir has a bit of CC. And oh, they've caught carry. carry. Yeah, level one here. The Flame Spit are doing so much work as long. Is he going to tank a tower shot? Carry doesn't need to use the Flash just yet, but message received. <laughs> These minions don't want to stop chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> On an excursion. Sketch is saying, no, 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 no. Don't you, don't you dare take away my cannon <laughs> creep. I'm going to need that. That's actually really good because it can freeze if they choose to. They've got the cannon just sitting on the side that they can just not y put near the turret. Yeah. That worked out really well for them. And Endless, not opting to hard push, but opting to push the minions to the turret at the exact same time and waiting for the Nunu to come back and maybe just clearing some waves before. So it looks to me as though Scatch and Hard are getting this tower down as low as possible. And big minion stacks on both sides. The difference is one against two and a dragon being started. Yeah, and Carry is down here as well, not wanting to teleport to that top outer turret, which has been sort of a death sentence for almost everyone that's decided to do that around the three-minute mark. So intelligent forethought in not using that summoner spell in order to get some more experience from the minions underneath that one. It is going to be Dandy taking away this dragon at four minutes into the game. Always the risk that you play when you've put your top lane in the 1v2 situation. If you're the one enacting the lane swap, then you're the one who might be in a very bad situation when it comes to early dragons. It's not always easy to contest those, so it's going to go down very early in this game, but not a big issue this early. It is a scaling dragon buff. Yeah, well, of course, it doesn't really mean too much for the squad of Vici Gaming right now, but of course, if they want to accelerate to a very early fifth dragon, it is a much more relevant situation. So if Vici can pull ahead in any way and get some control there over that one, the fact that their sort of amount of CC in a team fight might be a bit of a problem, may not necessarily be so much if they can get the snowball rolling. Yeah, that's very true. If they get five dragons, it doesn't really matter how much CC you have because you've got enough Just damage burn everyone to, down. Exactly, enough damage to burn everyone to shreds. Yeah, it is going to be three men strong heading towards this bottom side. Unlimited potential. Notice the fact that the dragon has been taken, I believe, as the dredge lion just gets thrown out there by heart. Spell shield just preemptively there as Sketch now going to put on some pressure here on the bottom side. And do you understand why unlimited potential probably swapped this one back? I guess the Urgot has hit that level three mark where it does start to have a bit more strength in a lane. Okay. You're against the Sivir, who is a very low ranged AD carry of Endless. And he is level 5, though, so being the Urgot, you're in a 1v2 matchup until the Nautilus comes back, especially at the moment. He's being very aggressive, and two levels between them, you need to respect a level 5 Sivir's boomerang. Yeah, and Sketch, he has picked up a tier, but, I mean, that is no combat stats at all. So the fact that Endless hasn't been back to base has not been punished at all from the item buys to come in from Sketch here. So it's interesting that Endless is playing so far back in this lane. It's fine that he did swap back. In fact, I don't mind it at all because he does have the tier available. He came to lane the level that he needed to at least sustain the lane and not get pushed out. So he's got the item he needs. He's got the level that he needs to sustain. And I believe that's what he's for the most part going to do. But here we are. Yeah, there's the flash pulverize there as well. As Scat's going to get exhausted. Does use the heal, but Hart in amongst everything. The teleport coming in from the top lane is here as long. He's going to arrive first. Carry finds his way in, but Dandy picks up the kill. Mata, he's burning down. Does manage to fall as Carry bounces over the top of Long and picks himself up one as well. Actually, Endless grabbing that one for himself. Titans Wrath onto Hart. But already his team's gone, and Vici with a much better beginning of this game. But, I mean, their beginning last time wasn't too bad either. Yeah, but this is much more kill-oriented in the beginning of a game. They're going to be able to at least zone away Hart from this turret and deny a lot of minion experience. Not going to go to Urgot. And level 6 to 4 already is the Sivir against the Urgot. The flash initiation from that Alistar as well, enabling so much work. And between, we said they don't have a lot of CC, but between the Urgot... I mean, the Alistar and the Nunu this early, Exhaust going down as well. Very hard to stay alive. Yeah, Endless actually going to get caught up there from Hart, who manages to land that dredge line. It was very cute. I think that was completely blind. Just it denying was. a recall. Yeah, it was completely blind as well. Just on a chance. Yeah, not bad. Endless actually going to find Sketch there, who lands a nice Noxian corrosive charge. Not going to find too much. Does have a Ruby Crystal now, though, so of course the... Current Urgot build of the Black Cleaver looking to be what Scatch is going to opt for early. 
Able to pick up the um, the Phage, which is just a brilliant early game item. Just having the extra health, the extra AD, and of course the Rage passive, just so useful in these early trades. Yeah, being a low range AD carry, you want to stick to people as much as possible. So having the Phage will help a bunch. And it's going to work out quite well. This new Black Cleaver build is amazing on Ergon. Yeah, Xia Yang able to pick up his blue buff here from Amy as he throws that one over there. And Long was able to at least take down the turret. Of course, Scatch had put in a lot of effort getting that one low earlier on as Endless does manage to use that spell shield on one of the uh, the, hunt the Acid Hunters, but still taking a whole bunch of damage. You can see how this early in the game, even with the tier available, Scatch runs out of mana pretty much straight away. So being able to spell shield one of the three is still one less hitting you. Yeah, and true. he runs out of mana within about three attempts of this. So <laughs> this early in the game, it's a pretty good position to be in as a Sivirin. That's why most people tend to pick the Sivirin to the Urgot, because you have the spell shield available. Your range isn't better or worse by any means. It's very similar. But you can sustain through an Urgot's early damage, which isn't that high. It's just consistent. Man, look at Carry. He's so incredibly low in health <laughs> here on this mini Nar at level five. Amy, he's going to take a boomerang there. As with the help of the long sword, Carry's able to get a little bit of damage down. Yeah, Carry, in fact, looking so squishy compared to even Endless. Yeah, he's looking very squishy. 830 health was what he had as the mini now there. That's Look, he's nothing. putting the mini into mini now there, Rusty. It's understandable. Katong might be in trouble. Of course, does have the pull, so Vladimir able to be pretty slippery. Yeah, blue buff as well being here on the Azir as the turret finally goes down for the bot lane. They denied as much as they oh, could. Oh, and they managed to pick up a kill, kill here as well as Scatch falls down. Dandy, I think, may, may have used a blood boil and thrown out one of the ice blasts, but that was just Scatch falling down. Yeah, I guess he overstayed his welcome. The tower was very low. And yeah. They'd been denying a lot. They decided now's the time to take it, and they took it Ergot with them. Yeah, it's a different experience here. This game is endless. 2-0 and 1 now on this Sivir Heart. Looking to try and get something done. Only level 5 doesn't quite have the ultimate available just yet. Amy going to come through. Unable to use his Void Rush to really get himself any deeper into this one just because there's not a whole lot of turrets around this side of the map. And Vici. Dragon has respawned and they're looking to try and set up a bit of a gank brush here. Heart might fall for it. He may walk into it. It should be warded by the Nautilus or at least thrown an E out by the Urgot. They may still go there, but we'll see what Urgot... No. Ooh, unlimited potential. There it is. Yeah, Noxian Corrosive Charge does come through, but... Safety the things go off. So they have been spotted out there just a little bit. It was a cute little plan by Vici. It Nothing was. going to come of it. Was. I really like the adaption that Nunu has made here. Dandy is being very smart, staying bot lane pretty much since the last dragon. Yeah. Sitting there, just putting the blood boil under the sieve, denying as much as they can onto the Urgot. And there hasn't really been a rotation from the Rek'Sai side to answer it yet, though the farm is massive difference between them. Yeah. 45 to 24. Nunu still has that kill participation, so he can afford to sit bottom and use the blood boil, make sure that Sivir is massive. And speaking of massive Sivers, while we're looking at the scores, 86 to 59 in CS and two kills. The items right now between them, just as big. Yeah, out of control. Only a Phage plus a tier to the BF Sword, Berserkus Creeps, and of course the Avarice Blade there as well. Things going fantastically this game for Endless, as long as just hanging out with a pretty big enemy minion wave here on the top side of the map as Carry comes through just to try and hold this one off. Yeah, he's going to try and push it to the tower and stop Long from freezing it as much as possible, but he's going to opt to back off because he's a bit pushed there. Amy is not to be seen in the top area whatsoever. In fact, they've seen Amy near the Dragon Pit and they don't want any control of it going in favor of unlimited potential. Vichy want this Dragon. Yeah, Marta's just running around. I didn't know cattle could move that quickly, but he <laughs> certainly <laughs> manages to. Endless, nice spell shield there. No co corrosive charge is going to be coming down as just the cannon creep to go and Endless. Lots of pressure here, of course. If Siva can do anything, she can push minion waves, and this inner turret is going down very, very quickly. Scatch doesn't want to spend too much time underneath that one. He knows exactly what happens if he does so. And man, Vici, lots of map pressure so far. Both outer turrets in the bottom lane have fallen down, and they're the only ones. It's crazy to think that the amount of pressure that is being placed in the bottom right now is essentially the only lane that has actually had pressure. 
Yeah. Logic almost dictates that a Rek'Sai should be there from start to finish to answer this because there's nowhere else for the Rek'Sai to be and all he has really been doing is farming. Yeah. It's 51 CS to 28. He's definitely been farming. You can say that again, but sort of hasn't really netted them too much. Is Vici going to be able to take their second dragon here at 12 minutes into the game? Carry just bouncing over the top of Hart, who wants to find the stun. There it is as Zhang... He heads over the wall at the same time. Whoa. There's the depth charge. Amy flashes forward, wants to try and find the knockup. There's the equalizer, and Carry is most certainly dead. That was so many abilities <laughs> just to kill that Nah. They made sure that he was dying, and they do get him in the end, so they managed to pick up a kill, and it's going to stop them from wanting to get the mid turret. And I'm saying that as they rotate towards what looks like to be either a bait for the Urgot or the bottom turret as a team. Sivir's probably going to ult now. Yeah, they're heading over there. There's the on the hunt pop sketch. He's going to try and swap himself into position, but Endless throws out the boomerang. He gets headbutted back, and Marta picks up the kill. And man, Vici, they're moving around as a squad. They're rotating as a team in really weird ways. It's catching unlimited potential completely out of position. Yeah, that's not something you'd often expect. They had the mid outer turret completely available, but because Carry has died, the next reaction was, well, we can't siege mid anymore. They've got the numbers. Let's just kill Scatch again. Yeah. And they're really enjoying killing Scatch thus far. Yeah, they most certainly seem to be uh, working out exactly how that one works. And look, if you've uh, if you found something that you're capable of that seems to be winning you a game, you may as well just keep doing it. Well, that makes perfect sense. I can't argue with that. Yeah, it's just logic, man. Yeah. Yeah, I just totally know what's going <laughs> on here. Jia Yang able to clear out this mid lane as well. We haven't really seen too much from the mids, but they're very, very close as far as the farm is concerned. Same score. So not too much to ride home about here as Hatong does have that Negatron Cloak in his back pocket. Probably the Abyssal Scepter going to be coming through after that Will of the Ancients, which is just such a fantastic item for a Vladimir to have. Yeah, definitely is. And those both mid laners at the moment, we know Hatong loves to scale into the late game and start ramping up with more control mages. So I guess Vladimir, while he doesn't have the control of your normal Lissandra's or Zerus that we like to see him play he still scales very well and it suits Hatong's play style to a T and he's going to sit there and scale we know Xiao Yang loves the Azir I think third game now in the four games that he's played where he's been yeah. Azir only banned away Azir. yeah banned away in the last one so he likes to scale as well Azir needs that scaling so Xiao Yang clearly likes scaling yep. I've said scaling a lot seems to be scaling <laughs> is the thought for both of these sides but of course Xiao Yang just this is one of his comfort picks. He's more than happy to grab that one. Of course, Will the Ancients now completed by Hatong. Blasting one to augment Jiang's items here. As Endless with a beautiful spell shield means that Hart's not going to find the dredge line. One of the nice things about the dredge line is that it's very predictable as a Sivir. It has the animation prior to actually throwing out, so you can always react to it. It's not like the piercing light of the Lucian Q. Yeah, well, exactly. So certainly making that work out for him. Of course, Endless's spell shields have been very, very good so far this game. But Vici with a slight lead, but not really much to ride home about. And is it a mistake leaving Endless here in this bottom side? But Hatong, he's going to get ultimated here. There's a really nice Emo Plague as Zhao Yang able to take a fair bit more damage there from that. But in the end, not going to find too much. The teleport was started there from long, but then cancelled and carry followed his one through. Vici now going to flash forward. There's a flash snowball as Hatong picks up Zhao Yang. And Amy, you're dead as well. Hart in so much trouble. Tides of Blood not going to quite find him as Vici. They are able to take down their next outer turret here. And it looks like Endless has discovered the mid lane. And that is bad news for Unlimited Potential. Yeah, especially because there is a tower in the mid lane. And they ever loved pushing towers as a Sivir, oh, especially yeah. with the Blood Boil from Nunu. And they just had the numbers advantage. If you were long right now, you'd probably be regretting cancelling the teleport. Mm -hmm. You needed to kind of be there to use your equalizer. And unfortunately, the car carry continuing his teleport, I should say, managing to come in, having the numbers advantage, and not hitting an item spike, but just being so far ahead in items over Scatch is endless. The amount of exactly. damage that they're doing is comparably so much greater that they can continue to just convincingly push objectives down. It's now 4-1 to one in turrets and 6-2 to two in kills. Yeah, and Sketch not even with the mana immune completed just yet, so none of that extra mana translating into sort of extra damage whatsoever. Hatong finds his way back into this lane here at the same time. 1-0 and 2 now with a CS advantage, and you can see more than happy to go aggressive here under Zhao Yang. Yeah, it's quite difficult for the Azir at this stage to just consistently trade with the Vladimir.
because of the sustain that a Vladimir has. It goes without saying that if you do prolonged amounts of trades, it's not going to work in your favor against the Vlad. So you need to bide your time and show respect to his damage until you're going to all in him. Yeah, just certainly make sure if you're going to be doing damage to Vladimir, chunk him out completely and yeah. send him to the death chamber rather than give him time to just transfuse his way back to health. Long does get a ward over the side here. His heart looking for the dredge line doesn't find it. It's chilling smart onto Dandy going to slow him up just a little bit. But Long very, very slow now after that snowball came in and Endless doing a lot of damage with the auto attack reset. But the outer turret is going to fall down. Carry possibly going to answer with the tower in the top lane and does immediately. So that's a one for one trade there as far as these turrets are concerned. 5,000 gold still the lead here for Vici. Two dragons to zero as the dragon is going to be up in another 40 seconds. Vici probably want to pick that one up as well. Really keep this fifth dragon as a win condition available to them. They definitely want to get this third dragon. And Carry, I thought he might have started a recall after getting the turret so that he can rotate and get back here, but instead he's going to push it to that turret before recalling. Rumble has to answer now, and with Dragon up in 20 seconds, Nar's going to get there right on time. Yeah, making sure that someone has to be in that top side of the map, and of course Long doesn't have the teleport available just yet. Marta heading back to base now after getting some wards down, as Long is going to hold this one off the turret. With Amy, it does have Void Rush, so of course can get around that dragon pretty quickly, but there's only one turret available to, uh, tunnel, sorry, available to it's him to teleport to. It's in a weird spot, to. isn't it? It is in a very weird spot. In complete vision. UP actually with a lot of deep vision here available to them. They'll know exactly what VG are doing when they do head around there. This should most likely be an uncontested dragon, solely because of the fact that Rumble How? doesn't have teleport. They, they're out of vision at this point. Yeah. There's no way for them to get near the pit. It's too risky. There's yeah. pinks everywhere. Ward control. Just look at the minimap for a second and really take in where the red wards are here from VG Gaming. They're not defensive, completely offensive, and they're the ones controlling the middle area. So while the wards from Unlimited Potential are still offensive wards from where they invaded before, it's not going to reveal the dragon. It's not going to reveal anything of any substance because they're not near that area. Yeah, it's true. Hatong. Does have the Abyssal Scepter now completed as well as the Will of the Ancients. So a nice item spike there for the Vladimir. And when you're sort of a short range mage here as well that wants to do consistent damage, Abyssal Scepter is just such a good item. Infinity Edge completed by Endless here at the same time. So some real item timings to come down for Vici. And it looks to, be, to me that they're just starving out unlimited potential. And this is Dandy's Nunu doing exactly what Dandy's Nunu wants to do every game. Yeah, that's right. They are starting to starve them out at the moment. They've got control and they have initiated this Baron and it is completely out of vision. Seems like they know, but even the Absolute Zero going down have rushed this. Yeah, they're trying to get rid of it as quickly as possible. Only down to 4,000 health now at this stage. 3,000 here and... They're not going to make it here in time as the Baron, it's most definitely going to fall down. Oh, well, the Equalizer close. tries to do some work there, but Long maybe a little bit early on that one as he's going to fall down very, very low. Has to get out of there. Endless with the Depth Charge on him. Nice Spell Shield. Going to try and stop something, but Heart's going to fall down in the end. Nice Headbutt. Going to get Amy out of the way. And man, Vici able to turn around what was a difficult fight. Sketch and Jia Yang sort of hanging around the backside, but Carry he just zoned them out completely. And... Gave his team three kills and a Baron. That's exactly right. They managed to zone out. Carry did what he had to do. He was up against the carries of the opposition team, funnily enough. And what was essentially happening was the Siva was kiting back and the rest of the Vici gaming side were just doing as much damage as possible to those tanks. Yeah. By the time that they finally went down, Rumble was already out of the equation, blown up almost instantly. They just got it. They got the Baron buff. They had the number advantage because Carry was zoning. And then it was just a free fight from there. Yeah, it was really well done and a really decisive Baron here at the same time as... Let's have a look at it again. Yeah, so very standard, instantly going on to Loon. They need to get him out of the equation as soon as possible. And you can see Carry goes over there to secure that one. They have Siva using the Spell Shield smartly and the rest of the side of Vici Gaming just kiting back and keeping the Siva alive. The biggest damage source there. And all Carry had to do was sacrifice himself for as long as possible to save his Siva. And Hatong now with a massive amount of minions, all with that Baron buff as well. And he does not look too scared. The fact that there's five members chasing after him <laughs> here. He doesn't have the ghost, 
does have the flash if he wants to use that one as pool comes through. Marta and Cavalry. Carrie, though, they're around. Carrie about to turn into that. Meganar as well as Hatong is going to get flashed on. Actually flashes over the wall into the enemy base, which is an odd use of that summoner spell. There's Endless and Dandy. Just ignoring everything. A blood-boiled Sivir taking down this inhibitor. Dandy decides to stay around as Amy, super low. Endless takes that one down. Nice absolute zero. Beautiful positioning as the heal comes through from Sketch. Zhao Yang now is just going to get exploded. Triple kill now for Endless and Sketch. No mana to speak of at all. Marta tanking up this turret. And that is going to be Carry picking up the kill. And this could even be the game here for Vici as Amy, he's up in 15 seconds, but the inhibitor falls down. Baron Buff still here. Vici Gaming with Endless still around. And man, Sivir seems to be the MVP champion of the LPL so far. I mean, I know it's been two days, but she has been carrying her teams. Every single game that we've seen the Sivir picked in, they've been 2-0 roughly in laning phase alone. Yeah. The support that the Sivers are getting, we've seen the Nunu and the Nautilus just on the back of the Sivir this entire time. And the pushing power, the team fight utility, everything that the Sivir does, the underrated amount of damage, it's just that yeah. it really enables your team to do so much work. Yeah, it's really beautiful plays so far, but Vici, yet again, turning another series into a one for one as they seem to be tying a whole lot. We'll see whether they can pick up any 2-0 victories moving forward in this one, but man, it seems like unlimited potential. They came out very, very strong, but fell apart there. And I have to say that Sketch just didn't look as comfortable on the Ergot. Mm. The biggest thing was that they got to the team fighting stage in game one and unlimited potential have a really strong team fighting stage. Yeah. They seem to have out team fought even the likes of Vici Gaming yeah. right there. And the problem with that, that last game, Vichy Gaming won in laning phase. The Sivir got two turrets. They got the two mid turrets straight away. The Dragon Control, everything was in the early game stages that snowballed a win for VG Gaming. There was no real team fighting stage. Yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot that Unlimited Potential could do. But ladies and gentlemen, we still have a massive day of LPL to come. Of course, after this very short break, it's going to be World Elite taking on Snake. Don't go anywhere.